how do you grow on Twitter if you don't have a lot of followers? Simple. Just borrow someone else's followers. Let's say I want to reach out to a bunch of Twitter users who are interested in marketing and maybe they follow this already popular account in marketing called Moz and I can easily look at their follower list. It's public information. If I want them all to follow me, I could maybe follow the ones that I think would follow me back. I could go and direct message some of them. I could run ads against them. Or maybe I just want to understand them better. Maybe I want to look at their most recent tweet and see kind of what their bios are, what their websites are, and understand what they tweet about, what they care about, so I can make content on other channels or even tailor my own tweets to cater to this audience. Whatever your reason may be, we need a way to scrape all these followers for any public Twitter account. This is the official Twitter API endpoint to get a list of followers for any account. You can see how it works here. I'll put a link to this below. And I'm going to walk through how to use this and get all the followers for the Moz account. The endpoint's pretty simple. It's just a straight get to this URL. And you can see the parameters here. It's not too complicated. You can give it either the user ID or the screen name, which is easier. So the screen name here is just capital M-O-Z. We're going to use that. And then you can put an account. The most you can get for each page is 200. So to get all of them, we want to use a 200 count. And there are a couple other options on what the output uses. And then we can use this cursor for pagination. So we make the first request, and then we get a pagination token back, like over here. It's going to tell us the next cursor. And we take this cursor string and then make a second request and pass it into this cursor parameter and keep going until we get all the results back. One thing to be mindful of when doing bulk scraping are these rate limits. You can only make 15 requests in a 15 minute window, basically one request every minute. So that's 60 requests per hour times 24, meaning you can make 1440 requests in one day. And then if each of them give you back 200 followers, you can get a total of about, let's say, a quarter million followers per day. So I want to get all of Moz's followers. I need to run this. I think they have about half a million. I'd run to need this for about two days time to get all those followers back using my one API account. That's really all there is to this. So at this point, you can write your own code or write some curl commands and you can keep hitting this endpoint. And you'll keep getting back a bunch of JSON that looks like this at which point you'll need to parse the response JSON and go through all this hierarchical user object definition and then figure out the parts that you care about. You'll get into a lot of nesting like this and you'll basically have to go and combine all those paginated calls together on your own into some sensible format you want to use. Maybe it's a CSV if you want to put it into a database or an email marketing system or whatever you want. To avoid doing all this work manually and writing custom code, I'm going to show you how you can use the Steve C data platform to access the Twitter API using the official endpoint over here. Full disclosure, I happen to own the Steve C data platform. This is a paid product, but you can apply the principles and walk through uh, towards your own systems or your own code or whatever. You don't have to use this. It's just one particular client you can use to access Twitter. This here templatizes that request I need to make to Twitter over here. So instead of having to construct my own curl command or whatever, I can just put in my fields here. So here's my access token and Steve C fills in the request for me. I can click on this direct tab and I'll copy the curl command I could use. And I can also fill in my other parameters here. Like for username, I want to enter in Moz. And now I can click execute and Steve C will go and get the data back for me. Steve C got the raw data back from Twitter over here and it automatically went through that nested messy JSON and it found the user's dictionary and all these sub objects here, all this nested stuff about their status and the description. And it flattened all these up into collections that it suggested the ones I'm probably interested in based on the types of information in the column. So its first guess was, hey, you probably want this collection of users who are the followers. And I can see here about the screen name of the user when the person created their Twitter account. I can see their profile image. I can see their most recent tweet. So I can see what are they tweeting about. I can see the location, their description, what their website is. So I can see this person has a website over here. I may want to check it out. They're into AI automation and marketing, no surprise. And I can download this first set of 200 as a CSV file. I don't have to write any code. I just click download and it automatically figures it out. So now I have all 200 together in a CSV file. This is one request back from Twitter. I can see the description of each of the followers and I can see their most recent tweet here. So I can see what they're tweeting about. I can do some basic text analysis on this and see if there are any common accounts or other users that they're tweeting about or topics. 
I can even take this a step further because Twitter gives back structured data about things people are retweeting or if they mention other users in their tweet, I can see all the mentions for that all these followers have used recently. Here I can see all the mentions that the followers are using in their most recent tweet, so I can see who are they talking about as well. I can see they talk about Moz, obviously, Google Small Business, a few other marketing channels, HubSpot, obviously, and I can go here and maybe find other accounts I wasn't aware of before and go and check them out. And if I hit all collections, I can see a hierarchical drill down of the auto flattening of the data back, and I can even find that Twitter gives me back structured data about the hashtags that people are using here under hashtags. I can see avocado, something called Covent Garden, and I can download this CSV, and now I can see all of the hashtags that these followers are using. And I can look for patterns like about marketing, business, SEO, which makes sense. And if I scroll to the right, I can see the data about the tweets that included those hashtags. So it denormalizes all those raw tweets for me using Twitter's data. So the 200 followers were nice, but how do we get the 500,000 from the account? Glad you asked. We have to do pagination, which means we have to go and keep calling this and give it a new pagination cursor. So we have to look at the response JSON and find that pagination cursor on each request. All the way down here, we have to copy it and then put it in here to get the next one. But being incredibly lazy, that's too much work for me. So I instead made a Steve C data workflow that will do all this for me and aggregate those results together. So all I have to do is check out this pagination workflow and import it. Then I can put in one or more users I want to get the followers of. So I've just put in Moz for now, but you could put in other users one per line if you want. Then I'm going to put in my Twitter access token. If you don't know how to do this, there's instructions for how to get your own access token. It's free to use and you can see under here advanced inputs, I automatically set a pagination loop up in the workflow system, but once you import this, it's automatic. You don't have to worry about it. You can customize this if you want, but I would just leave it as is, and everything's all set with you. There are rate limits already put in place for you, so this will run 15 requests and then wait 15 minutes so it doesn't get rate limited. Uh, you can override these here if you want, but I would just leave the default so you don't get rate limited. You can get, like I said, about 250K per day, and you can just change your proxy type and run this. So the workflow just made the first request here. You'll notice there's no pagination token, and now it's gonna take the response of this and substitute the pagination token as the cursor here. So it's gonna keep doing that and feed forward in the responses until it gets to the end of the list. And because this is a very large account, it's gonna take a while. It's gonna take two days to get through all the followers. So I don't have a full two days to make this video. I ran this a couple hours earlier. This ran in about two hours and I got 21,000 followers, so let's just see what this looks like. So this file looks pretty similar. It has a screen name, it has the location, the description, websites, their most recent tweet. It also has things like their follower account. If you wanna filter out people uh, below a certain threshold, you can do that. But notably, this spreadsheet now has 21,000 rows in it. So a little bit more than 200. So you have all this information. At this point, you can put it into a database. Uh, or put it into, I know there's a lot of social media uh, marketing software you may be interested in, or do whatever you want with it. You can also do interesting things in Pandas to, uh, to do some analysis on it. Let me know in the comments what you do with this data. How do you plan on using it for marketing? Are you gonna run Twitter ads, or are you gonna reach out to these people, or maybe you're just looking for content inspiration and you wanna do some text analysis? Let me know, and I'm happy to make more videos that will help you make better use of this data. Hope you found this useful. Like, subscribe, and comment for more. Thank you for watching and stay data-driven.